Being someone with a social media presence myself, I felt that it was really timely and it felt really quite personal to me to be able to make a film that I am seeing a lot of people consistently struggle with online but not actually really know what they're suffering with and why they're suffering with it. I went on my own health and fitness journey myself a few years ago. I was really fortunate to have a knowledgeable base around me when I went on my own journey, but it made me realize that there's so many people, actually a huge majority of people don't have that access. So when people don't have that, it means that there is very little knowledge about how to embark on a fitness journey in a healthy way. And I was just seeing it over and over again and more and more worrying things, you know, 16 year old girls messaging me saying, I'm eating 800 calories a day and I'm not losing weight, please help me. Or like posting body checks online. And I was realizing how like obsessive of an industry and obsessive of a culture it is. And I just thought, someone needs to look into this. Like, why is this happening? Figures from the NHS show the number of under 20s admitted to hospital for an eating disorder rose by nearly 50% last year perfect social media images and a growing gym culture are some of the reasons experts believe there's been a rise in eating disorders. The film challenged me in more ways than I ever initially imagined. I think pre-pandemic level it was like 5,000 people we'd support a month and this year it was 15,000 people. It's looking at triple the support being given between before Covid hit and now. Our phones are non-stop going, our web chats, emails, social media, DMs, that's never ending. There's always someone needing support and it's, it's scary. It was important that I took that accountability where I possibly could. I mean, look, I'm a mere drop in the ocean when it comes to influencers and influencer culture. You know, I'm one of many, 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 and there's many more people out there with more followers than me, but that doesn't mean that I can run away from my responsibility and I think that was a really kind of pivotal and important moment in the film and a really important moment for me personally. I don't think it's very often that you get to really sit down and have a conversation with the most vulnerable people behind that kind of number on a screen. Like I see my followers and it's just a number on a screen, but seeing the real life impact that something that you may have posted on a whim and not thought about it, how that can actually affect someone and impact someone long term was really eye-opening for me. You don't see the hundreds of messages that I may get from people going, Zara, can you please post what I ate in a day? Yeah. Zara, please can you post what fitness thing you did today? People want to see it, like, sure, why not? You would do it because you want that, like, engagement. Um, but then sometimes I just think, like, it's my problem, like, it's just me being triggered by it. And it's, so it's not, it's not your fault at all. No, I agree. I know what you're saying, but then I think it's important that I, knowing that I have a following, I'm more mindful of what I post. And this is what I'm just learning a lot about at the moment. Tiwa from the Mortley Group has been in touch. So much about her eating disorder has been a closely guarded secret. Now she wants to tell me the parts of her story she's felt unable to speak about. When I first learned about Meanspo, I genuinely was speechless. And the idea is that it's like mean, horrible things that you read or be told and it will inspire you to lose weight. I had no idea that a Meanspo coach was a thing. Like you can actually take someone on and exchange numbers and they can send you abuse about yourself every day to make you feel so small and make you feel so insignificant that you feel like you don't deserve to eat. I've just seen your body check. You're absolutely disgusting, but I can fix it. Absolutely disgusting, you fat pig. You'll be starved from now on. Good pig. Now, are you ready to get skinny? Oh my God. Hearing about Tiwa's experience with Mean Spo when she was so young was so upsetting. It's made me think to back when I was at school, were there girls in my year, were there guys in my year who were looking at this content and no one would have known about it? I mean, maybe. I don't really have the strength to walk up the stairs. I do see just bones now and I see just a skeleton of myself. Meeting Lauren, it really, I guess, hit home how so many fitness journeys that start on social media can go down 
a variety of different paths and sadly Lauren's ended with her in a in, a, in an inpatient facility. Where did all of this begin for you? Lockdown 2020. I was on furlough. I turned to fitness to just sort of do something. Couldn't control losing my job. Couldn't control anything around me. So the only thing I could control was my food and my exercise. Mm -hmm. And that sort of gave me a sense of stability. It just made me think about all of the other people I know who've started fitness journeys, fitness accounts on Instagram. You know, that's where it starts. Social media and getting that gratification and glorifying diet culture. Like that's where it kind of begins for a lot of people. And then I started posting like, why eat in a day? I think it changes as it goes through. And I was posting things that I knew weren't real because then after this, I wouldn't even eat. I would say the last five, six months have been the worst that they've been. It ended in a really dark place for Lauren. And I think that even when I met her, I don't think she really knew how ill she was. And when I met her again, seeing how much brighter she looked and how much better she looked was just a, such a nice feeling. And I think even her looking back, she was like, I didn't, I still kind of was speaking to you about anorexia, but I kind of didn't realized I had a problem. And I think that's where it really hit home to me, like what an eating disorder actually is. Like it has that entire mind control and that's scary. This is like a fresh algorithm situation yeah. over here. Maybe look up kind of weight loss or fitness and health. Weight loss, what I eat in a day. That's quite low. And it's also given gym motivation and weight loss unhealthy. That's so I scary, like how it suggests that. So it's basically come to a conclusion about the content I want to see based on what I've written only one time. The scariest thing about social media is the fact that it's almost a bit of a trap for anyone who's suffering, anyone who's going through a really tough time and maybe searching for damaging content. The algorithm, because it's a computer, and doesn't really know what this person's going through, will just suggest similar content for that person to watch. And that is terrifying. Oh my gosh, look at this. So now we found anorexia weight loss, but it's like numbers substituting letters. It's just under a slightly different hashtag. I think another scary thing was that Charlie and I managed to find it very quickly. So why can't the social media platforms find it as quickly as we can? It's clear that there's a massive appetite to post this content. People really, really want to get this content out there. You know, people are going through eating disorders and, and sadly they are posting pro eating disorder content. I think that if I was able to find that content so easily, then the social media platforms should be 10 steps ahead of me. When you do have a lot of eyes on your social media, I think that it's um, it's really hard to know what the right thing to do is because something that's seemingly positive to someone else and they perceive it in a certain way can be seen as negative by another person going through something totally different. So it's always really hard to know where the line is and I've tried to look for the positives as much as I can from this film. And especially after making you know this documentary, I've learned how to be my most responsible self. And by, by knowing that I'm always doing my best, I can't let it be a negative place because it is such a big part of my life. I've learned a lot about disordered eating and eating disorders on my journey while making this documentary. The main thing I've learned, you know, if someone's going through any form of eating disorder or disordered eating, is to talk. I know it's cliche and I know everyone says it, but Eating disorders can be extremely isolating. They can tear you away from your family and your friends and make you feel really ashamed of what you're going through. They can make you feel incredibly ashamed of the thoughts you're having and they can make you want to separate yourself from those around you. They can make you feel so terrible about yourself that you almost don't deserve that support from your family and friends, but just know that you do. You do deserve that support and also just know that no one's gonna judge you. So many people go through phases of disordered eating and 
there are countless people who have suffered from eating disorders and come out of the other side. Like that relationship that you have with yourself can be repaired, but you have to talk about it. You have to allow those people that love you around you to support you through it. And there is help out there. I was lucky enough to be allowed in a group session um, with a program called Freed. And basically there were, you know, eight or nine people in a room all talking about their eating disorders and people were suffering with different eating disorders in that room. But it didn't really matter because they were all able just to lend a hand to each other. A lot of the time the eating disorders weren't actually about the actual eating and the actual restriction. It was more about how that person was feeling in their lives and about themselves and I think having that hand to hold, having that support from others around you, that was probably one of the most kind of liberating parts of the documentary was seeing other people realize that they weren't alone.